Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy and I create videos on absolutely everything coloured pencil related. Today we're going to take a look at six different dry blending methods and this carries on from the wet blending methods video which I posted last week. If you haven't seen that I'll link it in the description and there's a card up above, you know, just in case that's your kind of thing too. The six dry methods I'm showcasing for you today are a white pencil, the Caran d'Ache blender stick thing, Derwent blender pencil, brush and pencil powder blender, a colour shaper, Ooh, interesting. And a blending stamp. You've probably seen a few of these items before and you may have even used a few methods, but I'm pretty sure there's one here that you haven't used. We're gonna directly compare the results of each of these products and I'm going to talk you through exactly how I use these and how easy it is to relay a colored pencil and all of that jazz. The paper I'm using for this is Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper in 140 pound weight extra white. The kind of paper you use if you ever decide to do this kind of project will give you completely different results. So make sure you use a paper that you tend to use a lot for your colored pencil work. Before you go in and do any kind of blending with your work, you need to make sure you've got enough layers of pencil down. If you blend too early with dry products, you won't really see much of an effect as there's not enough pencil down to move around. So make sure you layer up and then it's time to get blending. As you can see here, I've got six little circles for each different product and I start off by adding a load of layers of pencil down. I like to complete this sort of thing with the main type of pencil which I use, which is the Faber-Castell Polychromos, so that's what I'm adding to the larger circles. And then I'm also adding three different tones, gradually getting darker as I head towards the upper right hand side of the circle. I also add little swatches of my other pencils to the side. These all happen to be wax based pencils so I can see the effect of each product on those two. The little swatches I have are the Caran d'Ache Luminance, Caran d'Ache Pablo, Prismacolor and the Arteza Expert pencils. You don't have to have tiny little swatches off to the side like this though, you can create many different sheets for each kind of pencil so you can really accurately and directly compare each of your results. For this demo though, it's easy for me to set it out like this. The first method I'm using is a white pencil and this is the method that 99% of the time I use. For me, it gives the best results and you're not really adding any sort of additional product down, you're just using a pencil like you have for previous layering. I've covered this method before in a whole video devoted to white pencil blending and I'll link it for you if you wanna look at this specific method in more detail. The basis to this method though is to use your white pencil like any other coloured pencil. You want to layer lightly and you want to work in the direction of your texture if you have any. Don't push too hard though as you'll turn this method into more of a burnishing and you'll limit your ability to layer further. So be patient and layer, layer, layer. This method does desaturate your colours but it gives a super smooth blended look and the more you layer, the smoother something becomes. You can bring that saturation back really simply by layering your coloured pencil tones back on top. This method is quite time consuming and you really have to have the patience of a saint. It can also look weird to begin with but you have to push through that feeling and that look because the outcome is absolutely great. This method works well on all types of pencils and it can also vary with the brand of white pencil you use. For this I used my trusty Caran d'Ache Luminance White. The Caran d'Ache Full Blender is next and this is just basically a big wax stick. It's a pretty crude looking supply if you ask me. I use this in exactly the same way as I would a pencil. I use it lightly and I work over my initial layers. Again, Pushing too hard here can verge on burnishing, so be very careful. This method doesn't do too well on the polys as it does for the other brands of pencils. It works wonders for the luminance, which is great because that's kind of what it's branded for. And you generally get two of these when you buy a full set of luminance pencils. It also works amazing on the Prisma colors. My conclusion for this is that it's because they are both the softer, waxier cord pencils and are much easier to push around on the paper than the harder counterparts. Overall, this has done a pretty good job and with more layering, this could have a really great outcome. 
The Derwent Blender Pencil. This is basically a pencil with a colourless lead. Kind of similar to the Caran d'Ache Full Blender in principle, but the core of this thing is so, so hard. Again, I use this lightly, pretty much like I would use a pencil and a sweep across my work. Simple, easy to use tool. This doesn't really do a good job for the polys though, and it always disappoints me whenever I use it on them. I may as well just not blend them. It's that bad. But it does do a fantastic job on the waxier pencils. The luminance, surprisingly, it works a dream with. This apply really isn't my favourite. There's so many things I dislike about it and it doesn't blend my favourite pencils like I want it to. It would blend them if I applied more pressure, but I want to still be able to layer. So I suppose this would be good if you wanted to use it as a method for like final layer blending maybe. Next up is the brush and pencil powder blender. This is something that I haven't covered yet on my channel, so here is its debut. This is an absolutely awesome product in theory, but it takes a while to get to know how to use it. At least it took me a while anyway. I'm gonna say straight up that this performs way better on sanded paper like pastel matte, and I actually made two swatches for this, both on the Fabriano that you're seeing here and also on the pastel matte. And I'll be going over the pastel matte swatch after I've covered everything on this paper. First of all, this is very, very dusty. Like, so freaking dusty, and it's not good to breathe it in. It does also say on the pot to avoid inhaling dust, and yeah, it's really difficult to do that unless you're wearing a mask, which is probably what you should do. I did not do that. Don't be like me. Be a sensible artist and wear a mask, trust me. So to apply this, I first tried a paintbrush, and it's not the best tool to use. I ended up switching to a blending stump, which when using a harder material to blend with this product, it's absolutely ideal. So here's why it's important to wear a mask. This kicks up a lot of dust, but it's not just any dust. It's a pretty colored dust where it's picking up your pencil pigment. Yay. Or not so because it's actually removing a lot of the pigment from the paper. Despite that, it actually does a good job blending. It's nice and smooth, got a nice gradation from light to dark, and yeah, good job on the blending front. I just wish it didn't remove so damn much pigment. You can't even pat the dust back down into the paper because Fabriano just isn't made for that, so you're kind of just left with this coloured dust mess. <laughs> This is a supply I bet a lot of you haven't used for blending coloured pencils. A colour shaper. These aren't specifically made for coloured pencils. These are more for sculpting and those kinds of art forms, but you can actually blend with this kind of product. This one is a Royal Sovereign chisel cup in size 6, and this is like a semi-hard kind of flexible rubbery substance. To use this, I use a light pressure and I just run the chisel cup head over my work and slowly the magic happens. In some cases, this requires a little extra pressure, but if you're patient, it does do some blending. Now this is probably the worst in terms of patchiness and it looks a little like a hot mess, but that's easily fixed with further colored pencil layers. This tool I have also trialled on the pastel mat as it works a little bit differently and a little bit more effectively on the sanded type of paper. This does a pretty similar job on all brands of pencils. The waxier pencils it does smudge a bit though. Lastly we have a good old blending stump or a paper stump. I'm pretty sure you've come across these and they're mainly used in graphite work but they can be applied to coloured pencils too. Like most of the other tools, you want to use this exactly like a pencil and use soft, light pressure to do your blending. Just like graphite, it blends out to a nice, smooth finish. It does leave a little patch in here and there, but nothing major. It works good on all types of pencils and it has a really great blended finish. Now we've covered how to use these guys and the initial blending outcome, let's talk about how the pencils relayer over each of these. Secondary pencil layers pretty much went down all the same across all circles, so it's not really worth talking about in each individual one. The circles that had a little patch in were evened out and everything was smooth once again, so good job. The one with the powder blender got its saturation back, so that was good too. 
The only one that had mild difficulties was the Cavendish Full Blender and that was because there was a waxy build up. This product is just so heavily waxy that it pretty much filled the paper tooth and made the surface really slick. Which is good for like skin tones and stuff where you need a smooth silky base but if you're wanting fur and other textures it's going to be hard to build those textures. The pencils just slide all over the surface and it does make it harder to re-layer evenly. Let's blend again real quick and talk about the results. The white pencil did a fab job and created a really nice smooth blend, although a little desaturated. That's not a problem though, as you can go over really easily and add that colour pop back in with more pencil layers. This is my favourite method, I use this all the time and I love the results. It has its faults and not many get along with it initially as it's one of the more time consuming methods but you can't deny that it does do a great job and you don't need any additional equipment. Most coloured pencil sets come with a white pencil so you're pretty much good to go. Likewise the full blender did a great job. There's a nice gradation of colour and everything looks kind of smooth. With even more layering, it had become super smooth and none of that grain would show through at all. It's done a fabulous job on the waxy pencils. The cons to this though is that it is incredibly shiny and you can't actually get as many layers with this method over some of the other methods, which isn't good if you're wanting to build something like fur that requires a lot of different stages and layers and tones. Skin this would be perfect for, especially when used with like a bristol board or something really really smooth. The Derwent Blender Pencil actually done a pretty decent job. This product seems to work better the more layers you have down so this would pair great for final layers blending as I thought at the beginning. It worked exceptionally well with the luminance, again surprising. The Powder Blender, well this one is really disappointing for me as it's so pale compared to the other circles. I can see this just taking an absolute age to use and layer with on this paper although it has blended out really nice the color shaper well this is patchy once more which isn't the best but it has blended and the patchiness again could be eliminated with further layering and i wouldn't really recommend this tool to be used for final layers because you get that really bad patching but it's a great little addition to any kits for blending base layers the blending stump is the one I'm most surprised by as it has blended so well and really smooth. It has a lot of grain when compared to the other methods but with more layering I could see this being a real contender for my white pencil method. This method is really inexpensive too and you can even make your own paper stumps to use and blend with. Before I tell you which is my favourite, let's just take a look at that powder blender and the colour shaper when used on pastel mat. The powder blender still kicks up a lot of dust, but because you're using a sanded, more textured surface, the dust is actually able to stick a lot better and easier, meaning you can compact the dust back into the tooth of the paper. Yay, no more mess. The colour is a lot more saturated on this surface as well, and that's due to the fact that the surface is able to cling onto the powder more effectively than the smooth surface of the Fabriano. One thing you do have to be careful with though is going outside of your lines and creating too much dust that it settles on the white of your paper. The dust likes to get everywhere, I'm not kidding. I had dust all over my keyboard and Mac which sits a fair distance away from my drawing space. So if you do get any outside your lines of or your kind of blending area, it's a little difficult to remove but I imagine a putty rubber would be your friend there. Relayering pencils and then blending once more gives you even more saturation and the results are so so different from those on the Fabriano surface. See guys, paper choices and the methods you use make such a difference. The colour shaper also performs a lot better on this surface. Being more porous, the colour shaper is able to pick up and move more pigment around with ease, although the outcome is still pretty patchy. It's much easier to eliminate that patchiness with the relayering of pencils on this surface though. It's a little easier to overwork this tool on the pastel mat and that can lead to serious patching so be careful with this method on this kind of surface. It requires a little bit more care and attention than the other methods. So which is my favourite? Well you guys have probably guessed from the very beginning but I still love the result of the white pencil so that's going in my top spot. It's very very closely followed by the blending stump though. 
My least favourite is the powder blender on the Fabriano. It's really not built for use on this kind of paper, although it does work to some degree. I love the results on the pastel mat though, and if I ever get back into using those surfaces, I will be using it that for sure. I'm also not too fond of the colour shaper as it's just too patchy and inconsistent for my liking. It's great for underlayers but not so much for the top layers. But I feel like I need to experiment and use this supply a little more to really hone the technique and really sort of get used to the way that it blends. The other methods are good, especially if you want to use an additional tool to your coloured pencils. Both blend great and do a fab job and I don't really have any complaints about them. So now I want to ask what you guys think has the best results. Do you agree with me or do you like the effect of something else? Let me know in the comments below and I'd also like to know if any of you have tried any of the more unusual methods and tools and how did you get on with them? Are there any other dry methods you have tried that you think I should have covered? Leave all your comments down below. I would just like to state that this is just my personal opinion based on the way I've used these supplies. You guys may get completely different results based on the paper you use, the way you layer etc. So I really suggest that you give this a try for yourself as it's such a fun exercise and you really get to understand your supplies. You can even refer back to a sheet like this when selecting certain methods to use within a piece that you're creating. If you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up with that button below and if you're new around here and you thought this video was extra super duper then go right ahead and click that subscribe button. Maybe even tick that bell icon too while you're at it. I upload new videos every single Friday and I live stream most Sundays too which are always a hoot and great if you want to watch some live drawing and get involved with the growing community here. We would absolutely love to have you. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye.